Kusu Zambu and welcome to People's Voice. Uh, as you must have already watched our uh, Zonka sessions, the topic for tonight is, are we Bhutanese losing our values? But uh, the essence here is that we would like to discuss more on where we left uh, during our uh, Zonka session. Uh, when you talk about uh, Bhutanese values, we have in fact had discussions on all sorts of factors that would attribute uh, to uh, that could be considered as Bhutanese values. We have in fact had uh, discussions on the attributes of Bhutanese values. On this, uh, we'd like to further dwell more on the Bhutanese values, whether it's uh, now, whether we are losing these values or we still have it, or are we developing on these values. Some evolution seems to be inevitable in any society and that we must accept. But there are certain unique values that are unique to Bhutan certain values that are absolutely or categorically unique to Bhutan and we would like to focus on those values and see if there's a need for any radical evolution or if there's a need for evolution that can be considered as an erosion of that value. So with this, uh, let me introduce my panelists. Uh, for the motion, I have uh, Honorable Member of Parliament, uh, Sangi Kandu. I have Mr. Ugen Doji and uh, Against the motion, I have Samtin Yishe and uh, Mr. Nima Sangye Chambula. Thank you all for your time. There's a change in panelist. Uh, Mr. Uginduji has to replaced uh, Dr. Sangye Macho. Of course, Dr. Sangye Macho is here in the audience. And any expert views or comments we need, you definitely look forward to Dr. comments. Uh, so uh, those who wish to participate in this uh, discussion, uh, we'd uh, like to flash our telephone numbers on our uh, screen. Uh, you can call us. and have your say, but uh, remember the topic well, and we would like to contribute, uh, ask you to contribute meaningfully. Um, let me start by asking uh, Honorable MP, Honorable Member of Parliament, Sangye Khandula, from where we left, in fact. Dasho Sangye Wangchuk has left a profound message behind uh, when we, are, we were about to wrap up our conversation, and that is, you know, what you give you must also get uh, that in return. And uh, respect or values or whatever it may be, it may not necessarily be top down. It, uh, it can be other way around as well. It can be reversed as well. So for now, after all these discussions, if you were to sum up, are we losing our values based on what Dasha Sangye has said? Uh, I'm still, you know, thinking about the, uh, the big change that, uh, or the small changes we've had in society, and I think, not being an expert, it might be uh, still a guess. But uh, my, my own take is that uh, when you look at what's happening around our society, for instance, um, just a day or two ago, there was a lady who was attacked right outside her house, and uh, the person doesn't feel secure right outside the home, you know. And I think that is a big change in our society. Um, Dr. Sangya left us with a very profound statement which talks about the, the Bhutanese value. And I think each society has a very unique value. And the Bhutanese value has been, uh, we have people who respect uh, each other uh, as equals, as um, people who are above you in hierarchy. And you have people who are superior to you, who are compassionate with the people who are subordinate to you. And I think uh, the Bhutanese value system in respecting each other as equals and as people who work in a hierarchy is really uh, the essence of it, what Tashu left us is that you respect each other as human beings and even as superior as bosses and uh, subordinates you work, uh, value which is very Bhutanese and what we understand it to be and feel very proud about is that while the subordinate respects the sub superior, the superior also is very concerned and very compassionate about the subordinate and therefore that reciprocal value of respect is there. Now, why I mentioned the disturbing news was that when you hear a lot of these disturbing news, it, it's, to me, I look at it as symptomatic of not respecting the value of a human life. And I think when you don't respect the value of a human life, basically as a human being, perhaps in quality you have degraded yourself. And therefore, I would try and relate that to the, you know, the cultural, the Bhutanese um, value of respecting human life. And therefore, I would deduce that, yes, we are losing part of that value. Um, I think some respects, definitely, because the population increased, we might have more.
But I think in terms of ratio, perhaps because there is more disturbing news, uh, we may say that it, it is a big concern and we should be concerned about it. And uh, indicative of that, the value, the values that we stand for must be visited and it must be um, brought back to life again, brought back to life. Okay. Uh, Tim, against the motion, any one of you, uh, are we losing our values? If you are to sum up whatever we have discussed in our conversation, you have been arguing that uh, we, in fact, uh, did not lose our values, but evolution is there, and that is in inevitable. That's the point uh, you have been putting across. <clears throat> I must begin with the general nature of Bhutanese people. Bhutanese people are humble by nature. If someone is brought up, born and brought up in Bhutan, whether he may be from uh, Tendu to Daifam or from Linsi to uh, Gaza, if that gentleman, if he is born and brought up in Bhutan, he is a humble person. He is a very humble person because we have been brought, in a, brought up in a Buddhist society, in a humble society and society has engineered him as a very humble man. So, the respect for elders is spontaneous. The respect for elders is spontaneous. Even in the family, uh, children, they respect their parents. Our children, they respect their teachers. We respect our elders. Not because somebody is uh, enforcing them, uh, the discipline. Maybe in the past, it must have been enforced. But to me, as far as I'm concerned, my personal view is that it has become a genetic factor. All Buddhist people, they respect the elders uh, with willy nilly. -la. So, the respect for elders, seniors, it has been continuing. Still, we have that value with us. The other value that I have seen is dress. Uh, the dress, the way we dress up, still is continuing. And also the la language. Three things the respect for elders, the dress, and language, these values have been always synonymous in a Bhutanese culture. Okay, that's a very big statement. I, I think uh, all Bhutanese are humble. It's a big statement and I think we need to debate on this as well as we progress. Uh, Mr. Ogindoji, what do you think? As a youngster, if you, when you observe all this uh, societal progress and proceedings that uh, you look at, what do you feel as a youngster? Uh, before I uh, share my views, let me thank yeah. uh, Sir Dawa for the invitation, it's really a privilege. Mm, well, to put the argument into perspective, let me begin by uh, uh, telling the viewers what, according to my opinion, is uh, the value system. Uh, what are those values that form the value system that defines our Bhutanese society? Uh, the uh, prominent of all are Le Jumri and Thadamsi, as Dasu Sangha has just mentioned. Integrity. Uh, the pride of uh, being a Bhutanese, sense of identity, the sense of reciprocity, responsibilities. These are some of the values that binds us together. These are the social fabric that binds us as, uh, as a community, uh, as a nation, and that's what guides us. Those are the value systems which guide us. So in my opinion, I think uh, there is uh, erosion uh, taking place uh, with regard to these values. Now, to support that, I don't have statistics or uh, does not have any ethnographic studies to support this argument, but then, uh, through my personal experience, I'll uh, try to argue personally, uh, purely through my personal experience as a young man growing up in a first modernizing society like ours, Bhutan. So uh, the problem is that when it comes to dress code, it has been uh, five or six years since I have experienced that personally. Like I'm, I'm someone who like to wear my go from uh, morning till uh, till I go to bed, and uh, I'm in in my go wherever I go. Now, the uh, interesting thing is that we are in Bhutan, but this is happening in Bhutan. Like, while I was in a college, most of my friends, they, are, they like to be in shirts and pants whenever uh, they are not required to wear goes. And d especially during the holidays, those are the days they don't wear goes. And I do that, as always, as usual. And now, when they find me wearing a go during the holidays, then I find people asking me, where, where are you going? Are you going to office? Uh, I mean, like, this is a surprising thing. Uh, I'm, uh, I've been born and bred in Bhutan, and then in Bhutan itself, I'm being alienated culturally. So these are some of the issues. That's why I think culture is degrading. And when it comes to the language again, uh, well, 
during my high school days, uh, there were lots of teachers who were emphasizing on preservation and promotion of culture. They used to find me if I did not speak Zongha. But then, what's happening is that I even took Zongha as my course, undergraduate degree course. But then, after I, after I completed my graduation, what do I get from Zongha? Wherever I, wherever I grow, where, whether I visit office, whether I deliberate in this kind of forums, I have to do it in English. So Zongha has no, got no use. So you are so received in English. It's not important. Everywhere you Which go. means we don't value that. Other things are that, uh, if we were really for the Thadam Si and those kind of responsibility, reciprocity, empathy, and those kind of values that we, regard, we once regarded as ours, then we won't have a whole generation of uh, youngsters in the streets who are hell bent on aping other cultures, who like to uh, just be in shots and pants whenever they, uh, they are free to do that. This, these are leading to uh, some undesirable behaviors like, uh, uh, for example, crime, drug abuse. This kind of culture are because happening because we are, our culture is being eroded. If our culture is still strong, cultural values, then I think this kind of things will not happen in the first place. So I think basically culture is degrading in our society. So I'm very concerned okay. about that. Okay, I think one of the things that uh, we need to discuss is also the fact that uh, are we Bhutanese too much exposed to what is not ours? And we would like to evaluate or we would like to do what is not ours and uh, uh, prove to the world that uh, we are also an individual of substance, not that we are unique and isolated even today. Uh, something you, what do you think? Uh, something you say, what would be your views? So I would all In contrary to what uh, Mr. Vagendoji just said, no, sir. Uh, I would still argue on the thing, la, the changes, inevitable changes that is happening in the uh, cultural domain. La. And uh, uh, I don't know if it is actually, you know, la, uh, if it is really the cultural values are losing or not, la, but there is definitely changes and evolution going on, la, the progress of evolution in the cultural uh, domain. La. And when it comes to the, the value of cultural value, la, cultural value and the, what's the moral value, uh, in accordance to the, the Buddhist culture and tradition, uh, uh, it's subject to change again. Uh, it's because uh, when the, uh, what to say, uh, it is, uh, I, I was uh, saying the same thing in this August session also, uh, it is dependent to the, uh, what to say, the progress of uh, intellectual capacity and the, the uh, economic status. Uh, and the, the, this, what to say, uh, the moral values are, Actually, there the principle of uh, the, our own culture is there, but when it comes to the the practical usage, so that's not there. It's mi misplaced, I, I should say. And when it comes to what to say, uh, practicing that uh, cultural moral uh, values, we lack a kind of a good guidance, the mental guidance that we should have. Uh, earlier, the Tasha Sangye was talking about the Thadamsi and the the what to say Le Jumde that we should have inwardly to practice all kind of uh, moral uh, values. So I think that it is uh, in, in a way a failure of our, our what is it, maybe a system of governance or the authorities who are responsible for taking care of the cultures and values. It should be uh, embedded with the education system, I think. But while there is there, the, the principle of culture is there. Uh, if we can see it on the books, written books, uh, what to say, the research uh, documents, and uh, we have also those who know very much about the cultures and values, but it is not there in the, what to say, not much into the uh, education system that, uh, that uh, what to say, where it lacks the, the actual guidance of, you know, uh, grooming the, the cultural values in a, in a person. Okay, are we lacking guidance? <coughs> this is one point that uh, we'd like to discuss further. But before that, uh, let's take our first, uh, first call. Hello. Okay. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. I am Dago from Samtila. Okay, sir. Your so, views? Uh, as, as for my view, la, I feel that uh, our cultural values are uh, actually exactly not losing, but we are in, uh, deproving. La. Yes. Uh, based on the last, uh, recently I have uh, watched one of the uh, Tichula. Yes. And in there, there is a uh, in the olden days we have a system of offering dark to the dancers, no Yes. And there, what I have seen is nowadays uh, in the olden days, uh, dance are offered to all the dancer, uh, max dancers, like uh, in Damitsinga Chamla. Yes. But now what I have seen is now it's just uh, for the sake, 
sack of uh, culture mola. We have been they have been offering only for the the champi and the chamjula, and there itself it shows that is our cultural values are uh, deproving now. And on the other hand, like our uh, history nola, nice. uh, histories in the old is had been written in zonka in uh, or the uh, uh, chikela. Now it says uh, we know that uh, it says that we cannot be uh, written this uh, or uh, histories cannot be taught in Zonka Nola. And there this self shows that since our Buddhist histories are written in Zonka or the Cheke in the olden days, but nowadays it says that we cannot uh, be written in uh, Zonka or cannot be taught in uh, Zonka. La. There this self it shows that it is uh, our cultures, uh, cultural values are deproving now. Yes, sir. And on the other hand, uh, one of the, during the Zonka session, Mola, and one of the callers says that now we know that <coughs> we are not, uh, we don't have to force to wear our dress uh, while we are going to the offices. But it seems that if we don't have a law, then I think no one will wear their dress during the, uh, while they're going, even in the offices. Example, he says that, well, uh, he will wear the dress when there is, uh, it is time to wear, and when he will not wear when it is not time to wear. Lah, example, okay. while going in the market. Okay. But okay, I think uh, we lost a uh, uh, caller. Uh, but uh, anyways, uh, points are well taken. Maybe uh, let me put this to Mr. Nimasangila. So, what do you think, lah? Uh, now, wearing go is one of the aspects that we have discussed. And what is more disturbing is not the fact that uh, you need to impose or the state or the government is trying to restrict or come up with some sort of restrictions and maybe impose individuals, impose citizens to wear go at all times to come. This is literally impossible. And already people are talking about democratic uh, principle, their individual rights, freedom of expression, and all these rights coming into uh, picture. So this is literally impossible. And uh, this is not even doable at all. But if you go to some institutions and offices, you know, despite having the national flag hoisted right in the middle, there are big, big signboards put there. And I've uh, said this in Zonga as well. Please come in formal dress. As a Bhutanese, do we need to remind people to come in formal dress? Do we know that uh, we need to go in formal dress if we are to avail services from that particular institution? <coughs> Thank you very much for your question. Uh, there may be some isolated cases, maybe a few people who are not uh, not very serious about the values, culture. But by and large, I think Buddhist people respect the law. Buddhist people, they respect the values. Law. And as I said in the beginning, there should be some adaptation law, with the changing of time. And the adaptation has been done by the government, I think, to a large extent. Now, in most of the public places, some areas where we have rituals, uh, we wear goes. And other times, we just let it go. And it's not been imposed. So I think this is the way that it should go. And the cultural values are retained by this way. And there's a word called mariban in a cultural, uh, what you call, this is a purely cultural terminology, mariban, it, says, it means slow death. If we don't adapt to changing times, changing attitude of the people uh, and the environment, then the culture will die, like, it will mariban, it will mariban. That means it, it is- It has to change, that uh, no doubt- uh, It uh, is a slow death. individual would accept. Uh. So, but uh, would you accept radical changes? in culture. Because for now, if you talk about the values, I don't know from where you got this, but uh, you in the beginning mentioned that all Buddhists are so humble. Are we really humble? If that is the case, then uh, what about the case that was pointed out by Mr. Sangyendu uh, right from the beginning? And a gentleman lost his mobile phone, broad daylight in the streets. He was talking to his family back in India. and. A young boy comes and snatched uh, his phone and took it away. And that man was shouting uh, uh, from his uh, behind, saying, why don't you let me finish my conversation? 
See, these are things that are happening in our society and some say that Thimbu is no longer safe to uh, dwell, uh, stay. So, are we not losing uh, our say, values? I say by and last, we cannot say 100% people are humble, but by and last, Buddhist people, majority of the Buddhist people are humble by birth only. Because we have been brought up in such an environment where we always respect our values, we respect our elders, and we strongly believe in Buddhist faith values. So our culture is always intertwined with Buddhism. So that has uh, uh, what you call modeled our lifestyle. And we are, uh, we are humble uh, by and large, and we respect our values. Yes, sir. Lack of guidance is one of the points uh, that uh, Mr. Something she pointed out. Lack of guidance in having all these values intact, in uh, trying to practice the values that we have. Would you believe that? Um, to reflect on just what I'm thinking when you talk about guidance, I think uh, I did mention in the Zonka segment of the discussion that uh, perhaps what we do need is uh, role models, and not just one or two, but we need a good set of role models so the rest can follow the you know the uh, the leaders in the truest sense, and then, uh, but not to say that we have a dearth of that. We have we have good role models, and I think uh, it begins right from His Majesty, where you know um, humility, humbleness, compassion, and I think uh, we can we can definitely emulate a great leader in him and his his father, Duke Jibala. Uh, I think the problem with that is um, for now is. Um, as, a, as a MP, this has been my own personal experience, as we get related, this is my own personal experience, is that in the very beginning and in midway, somehow it's died out right now, but there was a lot of commotion about, uh, you know, uh, because we were the new colors in town and uh, there was a lot of hype about the MPs trying to assert their hierarchy. Uh, but I think it brings us back to the point where people in positions of authority also need to respect people who've elected you by being compassionate about them, by being genuine representatives, by working hard. And in return, people also must respect them as their representative, as their trusted leader, right? And I think when you talk about reciprocity, it is there. Uh, I don't know, I wouldn't be able to really pinpoint where the shortcoming is, but definitely something seems to be gone wrong because you often see a lot of people coming to you, uh, giving you the um, formality of titles, but uh, the minute you're out, there's a lot of uh, other things going on, discussions saying, why should we uh, you know, call him as, a, I don't know, simply sake with a title. Uh, and we also always say hierarchy is really killing democracy. When in fact, how Tasha Sangyan actually left us was with a profound statement saying, even if there's a hierarchy, there's still a respect for you know, uh, the you know, people on the top, you know, being compassionate about the people further down, and the people further down then reciprocate think the person with respect. And so I think uh, the issue really here is um, while with time we've been exposed to too many foreign cultures, uh, we've also been introduced to a concept of Western democracy. And we've not necessarily been able to get our mind around this and say, we can have a Bhutanese democracy where Le Jumde Thatamsi takes a central place and we can still have a democracy. Other than having a Western model, we're saying, we're the same, so I must say hi to the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister shouldn't feel anything about it and I shouldn't have any qualms about it, right? And I think the whole concept here is we need to wrap our mind around it and that we can have a democracy which is in context to Bhutan, which revolves around Bhutanese value system. And no one feel, should inf feel inferior in uh, according due respect to anybody in, uh, in, in society. And I think when the elders do that, I think our younger people will naturally not be too lost. And I think that's what brings us back to something's uh, concern about guidance. And I think today, uh, if our young people are getting involved in problems, uh, misled, misplaced, disillusioned, uh, perhaps somewhere along the line, I think us, the elders, we are responsible for it because perhaps we are preaching too much and we're not doing it or we're not doing it as clearly as it can guide them. And, <coughs> but whichever you put it, I definitely see a degeneration in our culture, our value system. Okay. One point uh, Mr. Sangi Hindu raised was hierarchy is killing democracy is one argument that people put forward. But another argument is democracy has killed so many Bhutanese values. This is another argument that's coming in. Uh, so before that, uh, let's take uh, another call and then we'll come back to the discussion. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. 
Uh, could you please introduce yourself? Uh, good, uh, good evening. I'm uh, Tsering calling from Timbola. Okay, sir. Uh, I would like to highlight one important uh, point here. I think I feel it's important. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, it's about uh, our attitude towards the language we can and cannot speak. You know. Bhutanese uh, people tend to feel ashamed and embarrassed if one is not able to understand, speak, and express thoughts and feelings in English. Surprisingly, Bhutanese do not feel ashamed when they proudly say they do not know Zonghal. I thought this, uh, this should not be. Uh, it should be otherwise. Bhutanese should be ashamed if we are not able to understand and speak our own language. English is important, but should be okay if we make mistakes because English is not our mother tongue. Therefore, I thought uh, this kind of attitude is not good for Bhutanese people, and therefore we should change this kind of thinking and attitude. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Mr. Maybe let me put this to something. Uh, something, what do you think? Few Bhutanese going abroad to study, studies there, comes back with a very heavy foreign accent. The value that you bring with your education is always questionable. But you're so used to the culture abroad that when you, once you come back, it's giving you a tough time or it's difficult for you to adapt to the values that uh, you have been practicing throughout your life and suddenly you go out uh, one or two years to study, come, uh, come, come back, finding it very difficult. And they call themselves liberal. We are trying to be liberal, not too uh, hierarchical, not too conservative, not too uh, traditional. This is the thought that uh, some of the people actually have, and I met them personally. In fact, uh, some senior government officials told me that they don't feel comfortable wearing goes. I'm not making this up. And I was a bit surprised. Oh, what do you think? I think that's their, their own perception. And as I was talking about the guidance, they were already in the other, other part of the world, not in Bhutan. And they were guided by all those, uh, those uh, external factors. So for example, a person uh, brought up in Amer America will be guided by all those uh, factors that is being practiced in Am America. And Maybe something, let me interrupt. Why this is happening? You are here in Bhutan for 20, 30 years, yet you didn't get proper guidance to say that you're a Bhutanese and you'd like to uphold those values. You're outside or you're abroad one or two years and you get so used to the culture that is there. Well, what is going wrong? Well, uh, that's again the same thing. Like it comes, uh, it uh, ultimately boils down to the guidance. Like. So to me, uh, I feel that culture is like a child like, for each and every generation like, because culture keeps on changing. Like, and there's no stop for whatever, be it culture or whatever values, like cultural values or economic values or whatever, it goes on changing. Like. Therefore, it's like a child for uh, every generation. Like. So it is, it is, uh, uh, I feel that it is a responsibility of an of a earlier generation. For example, uh, we, are, uh, we are responsible for, to pave the way for any values or culture you know, like, for future generations. Like. So it's, about, it's all about guidance. Like. And for instance, the person who, is, uh, who have been in Bhutan and then you know, who, who has uh, not been able to adopt all kind of you know, the Buddhist values, and when he is out in a uh, other country for even a one year and he comes back with all that values. Like, so it's, I think it's all about you know, the, the, the way we paved in our country to adopt that kind of uh, uh, our Buddhist values. Like. For instance, we are talking about our national language. Like. I can say we have almost a, a maximum person of uh, people who can speak, read and write, like, write Zonka, but there's no space created to uh, utilize that, like, utilize that knowledge. Like. Therefore, uh, suddenly, for example, in, for instance, even a, even a monk in a monastery who learns to, you know, like, uh, uh, who learns to perform rituals. Like. But if he do not get a platform to perform that rituals, he definitely forgets. Like. And within a few years, he cannot perform that, uh, uh, what to say, ritual proceedings that he, he have been, he, he have learned. Like. It's something like but that. where is that platform going to come? Like? Because in meetings that are conducted within Bhutan, yes. 
we conveniently seek permission and as Dasha Sangya said, whether the permission is granted or not, people speak in English already. So with all these uh, practices coming up, I think platform is already there. Uh, one example that I would like to cite, uh, I should not be talking too much because I'm here to ask questions, but one example, I'm really tempted to give this example. I was in a meeting in Hanoi in Vietnam and there was this young director who made a presentation and his presentation was all in Vietnamese. So we were all listening to this uh, translated, uh, translated version and he didn't speak a word in English. And well, while we all, uh, you know, uh, went for a tea break, there I saw him speaking very good English. His English was so fluent. Then I went to him and asked him. He said he was educated in Oxford. But what he said was, if you are not going to promote your language or your culture within your own country, there'll be nobody around the world who will promote your culture. And that message I thought was really profound. On this note, maybe we can take another call. Hello, Ola. Hello, sir. Uh, hello, sir. Is it uh, Shidawala? Yes, yes, sir. Please, uh, your comments, sir. Uh, uh, first of all, it's uh, really a privilege uh, talking to you, sir. Uh, I've always wanted to participate in this program, sir. Uh, first of all, I yes, would sir. like to uh, congratulate. Uh, I would like to congratulate for this program. And then uh, moving on to the to this topic, sir. I would like to highlight upon the example that you gave, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it says like uh, uh, about that example where you talk about a student who was uh, who had uh, his uh, learning in his Oxford uh, University, but then like he was so much uh, like practicing his own language. Uh, similarly, like uh, it's a very interesting thing. Like on uh, online, if you ask like which is the like most practiced language or, uh, is on uh, on internet, we would mostly think uh, on Facebook. Like we would mostly think it is English. But actually, the reality would be that uh, it is actually Chinese. So we see like uh, the kind of value that they place on their own language. Uh, and then coming back to like uh, incidents of Bhutan, I have like few incidents, uh, like uh, stories. Uh. For example, like I have discussions with my friends, and then like they say like, uh, uh, should we preserve our culture or like preserve our values at the cost of discomfort? For instance, uh, we have. Uh, the uh, use or the practice of wearing soglam. And then we now have the facility of using like modern shoes, sneakers, which are much more comfortable. And then like similarly, like we have the old uh, values and cultures of carrying pata wherever we go. But now if we do that, uh, I, can, uh, I can actually presume that we might be even like, uh, you know, like uh, condemned to like legal uh, sentences, right? Uh, that is quite illegal. And then about the dress. Okay, like as one of the participants was saying, when you are wearing go, are you? They are asked like they are asking like if you are going to office. That actually makes sense, uh, but because like if you are going for your games, I don't think we would be going in our goes, uh, goes and kiosks. But I think we would rather be in our tracks and sneakers. And then similarly with language la, uh, actually myself and I, like I thought it was only with myself, but when I talked to my friends, even they shared the same thing that uh, uh, religious discourses were much more uh, comprehensible and much more understandable. And we could relate it, uh, relate to the teachings a lot more when it was uh, given in English. Uh, for example, Sogil uh, Rinpoche and even uh, German Kinsa Rinpoche. Uh, the teachings, the examples were so basic and so practical. And then I remember what my father used to say. Uh, like this, I can relate it uh, to our uh, like old values and the modernized practiced uh, our own ways. Uh, new ways. Uh, the old values uh, looks uh, like kind of resembles gold. Uh, they are like precious, valuable, and then like they are very limited in nature, but they are very, very beautiful and attractive. But then uh, actually, if you look into the things around us, most of the things around us are not made up of gold. They are made up of silver. So the modern ways that we practice are kind of resemble uh, resemble silver, which are so applicable, uh, so so easy to use, okay. so available, okay. and then like it's all around us. Thank you. So that's what I feel. And then uh, well, uh, thank you so much. La. I think uh, you have uh, brought some very good examples to this discussion. Thank you. La. I think uh, I've given you enough opportunity to express yourself. La. Maybe we can do you. What do you think? La? Uh, the points that uh, were raised by uh, our caller. La. 
uh, well, uh, when it comes to maybe the basic question is our witness values, our culture, our tradition, are they coming at a, at a heavy cost of discomfort? Uh, well, I think some of the values that we hold, like uh, the usual practices, or, or one of the components of culture could be our religious practices. Like uh, if you are forced to uh, practice on a daily basis, like uh, prostrating or this kind of things, may not uh, really be necessary. But a simple thing like wearing a go, People say like uh, if you are uh, uh, going to play a sport or if you are going to do some uh, services, maybe work in a firm, it's not necessary for you to wear in a go. But what we Bhutanese don't realize is that our forefathers have been fighting the wars, building zones, bridges, all in a go. So all of a sudden, there should not be a question where uh, we are not comfortable walking a go in a street. This is uh, not really a big thing uh, for us to shoulder. In fact, we should be proud as a citizen to wear a go or speak in Zonka. We should do it with a sense of pride of being a Buddhist. So this is what I think uh, Buddhist citizens, especially the younger uh, generations, must realize. But when it comes to uh, the other thing, like uh, people uh, say like culture should evolve and otherwise it, it will not be resilient. Well, I accept that fact, but it should not evolve to the extent that at the end, whereby we are left with nothing that we can call truly Buddhist. So uh, supposing, say, half kira, uh, there is a kind of evolution. But when it uh, uh, comes to wearing altogether a different uh, form of dress, like shirts and pants, there's not evolution. There's direct uh, transplantation and that kind of thing. So I think these uh, things are not really desirable. One other thing I would like to highlight here is like, when it comes to uh, a young, young man snatching a foreigner's uh, phone from, or what you know, just in the process he was calling to his family back home, I think this kind of violence, vandalism, crime, gang fights, these are indirectly a kind of actions which results, a kind of expression which results from the degradation of values. For example, this happens because people are uh, too much uh, driven by the desire to acquire wealth, materialism, and consumerism. This kind of things result instead because there are degradation of the value of Thadamchi and Lejumde. Because at the end, Thadamchi and Lejumde, Padabugi Thadamchi, Lebeda Lubtugi Thadamchi, this kind of values. If uh, in that kind of relationship, a parent is supposed to guide his uh, children, and uh, especially at this point of time, I think most of us in the capital city don't have that time because parents are busy working in the office. So education is basically left to schools, right? Yes, yes. So uh, this kind of values should be imparted. That's why uh, that kind of failure is there. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is that, that like, uh, the modern values, the degradation is uh, uh, very explicit. Uh, in a sense that uh, people are too driven by a sense of materialism, consumerism, that kind of thing. And you see uh, earlier, because our, uh, one of the guiding values for Buddhists is a sense of interdependence, whereby we have a joint family system. But the families are getting uh, increasingly nuclear. So th this is one of the uh, what's now, symptoms of degradation of our values. So okay. uh, maybe. Uh, Mr. Nima Sangela, uh, what do you think? La? We have already pointed out that uh, Hierarchy is actually spoiling democracy, is one theory. But the other theory is democracy is in fact uh, eroding our values. In that sense, uh, many would believe that uh, even if they come in conflict with the law, or even if they are not uh, following the values that we have in place, they would argue it's, it as uh, saying uh, individual's right, overshadows all the other rights. How would you interpret uh, that misconception? Uh, this is uh, not an isolated case. When we are going through a transition, there's, there will be always frictions. La. There will be always problems associated with this till uh, we adjust. And this, we have to remember this is an adjustment period now. Democracy has just started and is gaining ground. And people have some misconceptions about democracy. It has to be clarified. And it will be clarified over the time. La. And this is also the time to correct our cultural values. La. And one thing we have to remember for Bhutanese, we have to always insist. Because even if we get a guest at home, you know, first we say that we would like to have some tea, he will say, no, no, no. Then you insist again, he will have more and more tea later. In fact, he will. <laughs> so for one now, port, you la. believe that there's uh. no one to insist uh. so on we Bhutanese have, to yes, follow la. what is ours. Then followed by the dinner or another meal, he will first register, but you insist he will have. Uh, 
the dinner and so the, adaptation the is not a problem so insist we have to insist our younger generation and we have to uh, give them enough time to adjust adaptation i have seen one gentleman he has stitched one uh, uh, what to call soklam like in bangkok is completely in leather and he has adjusted to his uh, own liking and he has made it yet it has is uh, all the what to call requirement of soklam and now the cultural industrial evolution has occurred now the, the shoes are being made in, in western design and yet we are having that a uh, traditional Bhutanese uh, shoe with us. So maybe there will be a bit of a discomfort and adjustment will be there. And one thing, uh, Bhutanese people are very much susceptible to outside influence. We are never, we are never colonized, but we are always under influence. See, Tibetan influence we had. But the Tibetan influence came to Bhutan, but it didn't spoil the Bhutanese culture. It, in fact, it... Uh, strengthened the culture, made a unique one, and even became uh, very vibrant. Uh, going back to language, la, our Buddhist people, they go to U.S., and after six months, they speak in an American accent. La. But that is very temporary. Even uh, you see the animes and uh, monks, they are going to Tibetan uh, lakhangs, dasang. They come in uh, and speak in a Tibetan accent for some months. <laughs> and these are just temporary. And when they come back, if we again uh, bring them into the line, they will definitely uh, be within the Buddhist cultural framework and ideology. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Values and Buddhist values. Now, keep aside the discussion on uh, dress code, language. But one thing that uh, we all need to ask ourselves is, are we really proud to be a Buddhist? That's the question that we need to ask ourselves. And in most cases, we tend to question everything that is Bhutanese, even as Bhutanese. Uh, Mr. Samtay what do you think? I think like, questioning our own, you know, like, own culture or what, uh, whatever, like, uh, question ourselves, like, I, that's actually a healthy trend, I, I guess, like, uh, I, uh, I should say. Like, uh, because, you know, questioning oneself means uh, you are uh, conscious about yourself like, and you are trying to guide your own way. So therefore, you question yourself. And uh, as you question yourself, uh, even you know, like, talking about the culture and values, so whatsoever, if you are not able to question yourself, you cannot realize what you are doing. And you, uh, you cannot even you know, realize uh, what you are up to. So therefore, you know, questioning oneself and you know, trying, to, trying to be oneself is something, you know, uh, uh, what to say, uh, uh, a good thing in one's self. La. And I should say, uh, as a Buddhist, and I think we are proud of being a Buddhist. La. And like, like we said, like even the, the, the changes in our dresses and all, talking about all these things, uh, uh, going back, we are talking about, you know, like wearing choklams and all, and, and right now we are wearing, uh, uh, what to say, imported shoes and socks, stockings and all. But it's still unique and, you know, the... Uh, uh, imbibed to our own culture, like, not so different from anything. So I think it's always, you know, uh, whatsoever changes are there, it's coming within the, the principles of our own culture. But there are some, ch but changes are always there, or what to say, like, uh, accompanied by uh, good and bad, bad sides. Like. There are always some good, uh, what to say, changes going on, and still, you know, there are some bad things. So okay. that's why I was saying that the guidance is more, more most important, in, you know. Like. Okay. Uh, Final comments, uh, maybe let me get these final comments from uh, Mr. Sangi Gandula. After all this discussion, as I already asked uh, Mr. Samtin Nishi, that are we really proud as a Bhutanese? We all know that we are Bhutanese by birth, but do we actually practice these values to prove to the world that we are Bhutanese? And that's where the question comes. You know, we have many things at stake and we don't want to do it. We, don't, we are not comfortable to practice or to preach what is ours but we are far too comfortable in practicing what is not ours. No, I Your think final thoughts? I, I wouldn't deny that we are proud, but I think we are proud of being a Bhutanese from where our great leaders have led us till now. Our kings have led us till here, and we are very proud of that. But we also know that our great leaders and wise leaders have now given us this power to decide where we want to go from here now. And now the Bhutanese people need to make a decision whether it's degeneration, whether it's um, 
the slow death of our tradition. Uh, now the Bhutanese people need to think and move forward and then feel proud about what we've decided for ourselves. I think we are very proud about how far we've come. But we've come here because of our great leaders, not as just because we're people. But from here, the democratic power has been given to us by the throne. And now I think because we've been given the confidence to decide for ourselves, we need to do something so that in the years to come, we'll feel, we will feel proud as a Bhutanese. And I think uh, all, of that, all of that is a holistic way to look at it. But my concern really is more on the intrinsic value of culture than on the extrinsic. But then I still feel that um, to be able to feel proud post-2008, um, I think whatever affects us would be our own decision and our own conscience choice. And therefore, I think uh, while we are proud of Bhutanese today because of how, where our leaders have brought us till now, a uh, few years from now, whether we feel proud or not, is what we do today. And uh, I think uh, it's a perfect, perfect platform and a time for us to uh, take it slow and reflect and think about the changes that's happening and decide where, or what kind of an environment would we leave for inheritance to our future generation, where our children will feel safe and happy and good. Yes, uh, Mr. Sangihandu, Mr. Oginduji, Something Yishi, uh, Mr. Nima Sangi Champa, thank you so much for your time. La. Really appreciate uh, for coming uh, to participate in this discussion. La. We have had this discussion simply because there are so many people concerned. Concerned because many feel that uh, we are losing our values. There's some erosion in our values which are unique to Bhutanese. La. Because these values are unique to us, we have every reason to preserve and promote. As said earlier, Changes are inevitable, evolution is inevitable, that will be there. But those changes should be to our comfort, to Bhutanese comfort. And all in all, we need to ask ourselves as to whether we are true Bhutanese and as a Bhutanese, whether it's really important for us to uphold or to promote the values that we have. Nothing much to say. Everybody who is watching this program knows better than all of us here. So we would presume that things are going to be different. And as a Bhutanese, let's not take things for granted. We are Bhutanese. Let anything happen around us. We don't, uh, we don't really care. We take it for granted is the phrase that is used again and again by many of our leaders. So let's not take things for granted. Contemplate, reflect, and see where we are heading. With this, we would like to end our program. Thank you so much for watching People's Voice. Until next Sunday, where we bring another debate on People's Voice, it's time to say good night, and thank you so much for watching.